Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite with a new FinSuite Webflow hack. In this hack, we learn how to take link queries from third-party links and apply the queries to links on our website. As the user continues clicking through our website, the link queries are going to follow them in their path through our site. When they're ready to submit a form, the link queries are going to submit along with the form. We've had this type of request and very similar requests from some of our biggest clients so they can set up quick ad campaigns without navigating to a whole bunch of platforms and dashboards to see the analytics. It's quick, it's easy, and it works. Let's jump in and see how it works. Let's see this working live. Let's see how powerful this can be when you set it up with Hack 11. What we are going to do is load this link with these queries on it. These queries are then going to be taken, put into a variable, and then applied to these links. We're also gonna keep the link super clean and not have all this extra information up here in the URL bar. Before we jump into this working, let's look at Hack 11 and Hack 11, these two links do not have any queries on them. Look at the bottom left here, hack, finsuitehacks.com slash 11, finsuitehacks.com slash 11. There's nothing attached to these. When we load this URL, we're going to know the queries where the user came from, and we're going to secretly add those queries to both of these buttons. Let's see it. So I'm going to go and paste this in, and when I go and load it, I reload the page. You don't see any queries up here. It looks nice and clean. It doesn't look like we're tracking you through 100 different sources, but we are. Check out Hack 11 here. On the bottom left, look at all those queries nicely going on the back of that URL. finsuitehacks.com slash 11, query question mark, source equals Facebook, campaign equals ad for Christmas. And same thing with this URL too. And if we were to have any URL on the page, these link queries would be added to them. This is great for understanding where your users are coming from and connecting them into a funnel understanding when they submit that form, what link queries were attached to their original URL without having to connect to different marketing sites and checking this platform and that platform. It's all simple, it's all right here. And that is this hack working. Now let's go and click on this, go to hack 11, and we're going to actually see this loading on the new page and we're going to submit a form with these queries. So I'm gonna to go to Hack 11. I've now loaded a new page. Note how there is nothing in this URL in terms of queries. We're looking at finsuitehacks.com slash 11. But we have secretly carried over those queries. Check it out. A hidden field form will submit on submission with this information. So we are continuously seeing where that user has come from as they navigate through the site. When they're ready to submit the form, we're going to submit. And that submission is going to be received with the queries. Nice. And now your end clients are going to be able to see a lot more information about who is submitting their form without having to check a whole bunch of different platforms. We're in designer and we have absolutely nothing to do. This hack does not rely on classes. It doesn't rely on structure. It doesn't rely on anything. You add it to your site. You don't have to worry about anything. The site can grow, get smaller, and it is going to work regardless of what is on your web page. Let's break down this code line by line. Before the closing body tag, we're going to insert our script. I'm not gonna lie here, this one could be a little difficult to understand if you don't have JavaScript knowledge. Don't worry, we'll go over it line by line. And even if you don't understand it after that, it doesn't matter. 
This does not rely on classes in designer or structure or anything. You just add it to the site and it works. Only use this if you need it. If you're not interested in submitting queries or you aren't interested in this tracking, please don't add this to your site. This is only if you want to really use queries in your ads, in social, and then track those through your site into a form submission. Let's get into the code. If the page URL has a query, we're going to run all of this. So if it has a query, we do this. If it doesn't have a query, we're passing over it. This is just making sure that we have what we are needing to work with. If we don't, then we don't need to run this code. So if it has the query, we're going to find all the links. And for each link, we are going to create a variable. Every single link on the page is going to get a variable of href val. That href val is going to store the data attribute of href. And the href data attribute is the link that we apply to links. So if I have a button to google.com, the data attribute href is google.com. Great. And we get the links href, and then we are going to run another if statement. If the href data attribute value is not blank, if there is a link on that link, if there is a, a value for the href on that link, and that data attribute does not start with an anchor tag, it does not start with this hash, then we are going to run this code. So if it's a blank link or it is an anchor link, we're going to pass over it. We don't want to deal with those. So let's say it, it satisfies both of these. It has a value and it's not an anchor tag. We're then going to declare an href variable. Then we're going to run another if statement. And that if statement says, if the link's href data attribute already has its own query string. We're searching for this. If it has its query string, we're going to make sure we maintain that query string. We're not gonna override it with the new query string that we're adding to it. We're going to, basically, we're going to append the new one to the old one. So we're gonna take the current link with the, the query. We're gonna add the end, which is going to add more queries to it. And then we're going to add the queries from the previous link. And now we have extra queries added to the existing queries. If it doesn't have queries, we're working with just a straight URL, we're not going to run this and we're gonna to go to the else statement. Else, no link queries exist, we're going to just put our new queries on the link directly. We don't have to add anything to it. We're just going to add those new queries to the link. And in our example, that would be source Facebook and campaign ad for Christmas. So we just put that direct on the link. And then after that, we're going to actually set the new href value. So we're gonna take those links, we are going to target its data attribute of href, and we're going to update it with our new href. And you can see here, we have our updated hrefs. We declared it up here. We are building it here, either from an existing link query with our new link queries, or from a, an href without link queries and putting on our new link queries. Great, and now we have our new links. These links are being applied to all of the links on the page and now when people continuously click through onto the site they are going to navigate with those queries secretly in the background okay now this is an add-on to the code that i really like to add it's not necessary you can remove this if you want this is going to keep the links super clean. Nobody wants to look at a URL in the browser that has 50 queries on it, that has two queries on it. It looks messy. If your URL is finsuite.com, you want people to be looking at finsuite.com, not finsuite.com, 
source Facebook ad campaign, Google AdWords, none of that stuff. So what this is going to do is remove those queries immediately so quick that the user doesn't even see them. And that's how we secretly take those queries from page to page and have the users actually carry the queries from page to page without even seeing it in the URL bar. So we are going to set a timeout of five milliseconds. And the reason for that is because we actually have to load the page with the queries. We cannot take them off immediately. We need to register those queries for five milliseconds, super, super short. And then after we have registered the queries before you can even blink, we get to run this line. And this line uses HTML5 history API to manipulate the location bar, take those queries, and I'm going all the way down here, take these queries and just remove them from the link. Very useful, very easy. We have a hack dedicated specifically to this if you wanna check it out. Also, we have added this code to our hack 11 page. So in our live example, we took in those queries, we went to hack 11 and we submitted that information in the form. We have added this code to the hack 11 page to make sure that the link stays clean on that page too. So if you are using this, you can use this site-wide inside site settings so that every page is going to take the queries, put them on the new URLs, and it's also going to keep the links clean at all times. That is the end of this code review. Again, if you were confused the hell out of that, don't worry, just copy and paste it, it works. Thank you so much for checking out this hack. Please clone the project. We have the entire hacks project available for clone. Start learning how these hacks work and use them on your live site. We're always releasing new hacks. So if you want to be updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want a super simple plain text email when we release a new hack, sign up at finsuite.com slash hacks dash updates. If you want to request a hack, we'll check it out and see if it's possible in Webflow. Go to finsuite.com slash hacks dash request. That's effing sweet.